Um, my name is Peter Romhani. I work here at Morpeth School in East London, where I've been for 18 years now. So what you're about to see is really a day in the life of the department. We're in a new department, it opened in September. We had the chance to really design it from the start, which was very lucky for us. So the idea was to have something where you can have lots and lots of types of activities taking place. And that's all that musical future. It's allowing students choice. And what I love about it is it enables the students to work independently, to give them that kind of responsibility, to explore what they're interested in and follow a certain pathway. The first job this morning was to unload the van. We were playing all weekend at the Barbican. We had two groups performing. It's, it's not a different day to any other day that we would have. It's just a continuation of the work that we would do normally. I'm back. <laughs> oh, catch it on film. So as you come into the building, your first point of call, your first point of reference is the music office. So that's like the hub where I want it to be really busy. I want to have an open door policy where students can come in and out, get their timetables. They can come and interact with the staff. If you want to use my resources, Matt, that I've created, that's fine. Yeah. You go ahead and do those resources. <laughs> that's fine. And uh, don't forget those resources that I've got for the Year 9 Arts Award. Oh yeah, the you can <laughs> So our music lessons that we've got during the day are very much practical based lessons, very much along the musical futures. It's about creating music. Music. It's about students playing music. So we need to make sure that everything's in place to enable that to happen. It doesn't mean that every morning we'll put all the instruments in the separate rooms because that's also part of what the students need to do is the learning process about being responsible learners. But it's making sure that the, the equipment is um, evenly distributed throughout the department. So in session one, there was a lot going on. It just wasn't the year seven music class that I had. We had 60 students learning at once. Okay, so we're getting each student in the practice rooms to get themselves to all the equipment set up and they're going to be working on solo performance okay. and they're playing pieces like EastEnders and Stand By Me and so on in groups and they'll do some performances at the end of this. We spoke last week about how we would successfully create a soundtrack for this film. Within that lesson I wanted to look, get them to think about their own learning, their own progress within that session. You know, we would be looking at independent learning, we'd be looking at how to use the resources. Again, you know, the idea of being resilient, if something's difficult, how are you going to resolve that? It's all those skills that are transferable. So then we had break time and it was time to go into the office and check emails and just to catch up with staff. We had students come in and ask some questions. We've got a concert tomorrow night, so I needed to do some organising for that. Session two, I had two student teachers from the Institute and they were going to lead the start of that lesson, which was a listening task with my year 11 GCSE class. And at this stage of the students' work, it's them working independently on a specific composition task. And in that variety of students um, composing, um, using different resources, spread throughout the department. Yeah. You know how Jeff, he basically just used chords and picked them in different patterns. I took those techniques and I put them into my music lesson. Yeah. In the basement, for example, uh, the young lady playing guitar, she was focusing on a composition which was based on Jeff Buckley. So what I wanted to draw from her was looking at the performance techniques that they needed to include in their compositions and getting them to think about it rather than being told. I think one of the great things about Musical Futures and its approach is, is getting students to come up with the answers. So, you know, it's, it's about not spoon feeding them, letting them work things out for themselves, and you're facilitating that. Like in that piece, it like, helps it build up to the chorus. Or okay. Something. So it's not just like all of a sudden. Brilliant. What we feel is really important in a student's pathway through music is that they have many opportunities. So we have a large peripatetic scheme. It all feeds into each other. It's all part of the same thing. It's about playing music. Everything supports each other. Creating a passion for music, creating a buzz around the department. Lunchtime's always quite busy. There's always something going on. There's always rehearsals. There could easily be recording sessions going on. The students who had come and signed up in the morning came back to the music room to rehearse, and you would have seen the social area being used. And in the building, we also have a screen that displays students' work, and it's surrounding students with the level of excellence that is part of what we're about. It's to have pride in their work. Session three, I was teaching a year seven class again this afternoon and we were looking at solo performance skills. Up to now we've done whole class work, whole class workshops. So I really wanted to give them an opportunity to have a go on a variety of instruments and getting them to think now about them as a solo performer. And we were looking at breaking down each particular <coughs> instrument and the skill that you, could, that you achieved by the end of that session. So yeah, while I was running the year seven class, uh, we had Matt downstairs and he was running a whole class workshop with his students. And then next to Matt was Rob, who was working with his IC, year seven ICT class. This facilitator role is all about getting them to do something first and then embedding the theory 
after. It can very quickly feel like uh, there's lots of music, but together it's a lot of noise, you know, and it can feel like chaos, but it's kind of a line that sort of chaos to start, start to unravel into something more organised and more structured, and by the end of the lesson you are getting things out of it. <laughs> something that is a really regular occurrence almost in every lesson we film the students progress we get students to film each other we do a lot of assessment for learning and, and that sits really well with musical futures hi my name is min has i'm playing the bass guitar i find it get a little challenging you know the notes but it's hard to like get from one place mm -hmm. to This afternoon we have a visiting artist. Part of being a musician is working with others and the others could be Winter Mars Silence, you know, it could be a Rune Gosh, it could be our community choir of old age pensioners and that's important, you know, that we're musicians and part of it is that social interaction that we're looking at as well. So we encourage all students to take part in an ensemble work, you know, of some form or other. So we've built up this musical culture and that's taken a long time. And it's a learning culture as well, it's not just within the music department, it's a learning culture within the school community. We want students to engage in music, we want students to feel that they are musicians, that they have something to give. It's not just a select few. And there are so many transferable skills that music is able to provide. Musical Futures acted as a catalyst for change for the department. I'm confident that what we're doing now has really inspired students and really enable them to progress. It, it feels enjoyable, I like being here, and that's what I want students to feel like. You know, not everyone's going to want to learn an instrument, but if there's something there that, that engages them, then that's really important. I want them to enjoy it. They will learn along the way.